Hello, my name is Xin Zhang. I am the technical author at the IEA Clinical Center. Welcome to the May webinar from our center. Our monthly webinars are based on our technical reports, which are available from our website, www.iea-co.org. Residents of member countries and the employees from sponsor sponsoring organizations can download our report at no charge after a one-off registration. Please visit our website for details. The subject for today's webinar is emission standard and the control of PM2.5 from coal-fired power plants. This report uh, on this topic has been out in draft for a while and it should be published um, next month. If you have any questions during the talk, please use the ask a question button box at the top of your screen. Add your email address as well so that I can send you a further answer if we run out of time. In my presentation today, first I will give a brief introduction to the concept, then discuss some of the international and national emission standards. Available sampling and measuring standard methods will be covered. I will also discuss some selected particulate matter emission control technologies with the focus on PM2.5 control. Finally, I will summarize my findings. PM2.5 causes not only air pollution, but also human respiratory and heart disease. It was identified as a leading environmental cause of cancer death by the WHO Cancer Research Agency in 2013. PM2.5 refers to particles with a diameter less than 2.5 micrometers. It is also called fine particulate matter. PM2.5 is usually classified as primary and secondary particles. The primary particles are those directly emitted to the air from stationary or moving sources. Secondary PM2.5 is formed from reactions with gaseous pollutants such as SOX, NOx, ammonia, and VOCs. Burning coal releases all these gaseous pollutants, plus mercury and other pollutants. In 2012, in Europe, 5% of PM2.5 was from energy production and distribution sectors, 56% of SO2, and 21% of NOx came from these sources as well. Therefore, coal-fired power plants contribute significantly to PM2.5 concentrations in the air. To control and regulate PM2.5 from coal-fired power plants, SOX and NOx must be included. Here are the air quality standards for some countries. The WHO's figures are lower than the rest of the countries. They are the guidelines for policymakers to set up their country's own air quality standard. This is EU's emission standard for PM, not SOX, from coal-fired power plants. In the EU, coal -fired, the coal-fired power plant emissions are regulated by the Industrial Emission Directive, IED. This directive merged the seven pieces of legislation, including the Large Combustion Plant, LCP, directive. The binding emission limits in IED directive are based on what best available technologies or BAT can achieve. BAT reference document terms as brief set out the BAT and their associated in emission levels, shortened as BAT, AELs, in the table. 
the policy maker in the EU and the member states have to fully comply with brief by setting emission limit values in ways based on bad associated emission levels. The emission standards are changing frequently. Each time it changes, it becomes stricter. The standards in brief are scheduled to be revised every eight years. The current LCP brief is long overdue for review. A draft has been produced last year and the suggested BAT AELs are listed in the last two sections in the table. They are much stricter than the current ELAs. The new BAT AELs have raised concerns from the power sectors due to the economic impact of meeting the new limits. This table gives emission standards for coal-fired power plants for selected countries. The lowest numbers are marked in red in the table. The Australian national or federal EL weights are guidelines and only covers new power plants. However, each uh, Australian state and the territory has their own Environmental Protection Act and sets its own EL weights. In China, the key economic regions have, have stricter standards, which are indicated to the right of the slash. The yield weights for new plants were first set in 2014 for the plants in the developed eastern part of the country to meet by 2020. In order to speed up their cleaning process, in December last year, China has decided to require all coal-fired power plants in the country to meet these year ways by 2020. For the eastern region, the date has been put forward to 2017. The central region has to meet this target by 2018, and the western region by 2020. Indian emission standards are new and are currently being reviewed. The United States was the first country in the world to regulate PM2.5 in 1971. Their emission standards are very complicated and different from other countries. The Japanese emission standards are also set out in different format. For comparison purpose, I used other people's conversion for America and Japan in this table. All the other countries' ways are their own official data. Now, can we accurately compare emission standards for coal-fired power plants? In my opinion, different countries' emission standards cannot be directly compared as it is not comparing like with like. Because first of all, different countries base their emission standards on different averaging periods, ranging from hourly average to annual average. This affects um, actual emission levels resulting from a standard. Secondly, the reference conditions vary from country to country. For example, most countries use zero degree dry flue gas as the reference condition. But Indonesia and Thailand use 25 degree. Australia measures SOX as SO3, while other countries as SO2. Thirdly, different countries use different units. USA set limits based on emission per unit of electricity produced, while Japan and Thailand use parts per million in flue gas. The rest of countries in the table use pollutant concentration per cubic meter of flue gas. Most countries regulate pollutant emissions based on the plant age. But the definition for new and existing plants are different from country to country. All these differences make a comparison difficult. The previous table can only provide a rough idea on which country has the lowest emission limits. 
Based on the rough comparison, China has the toughest ER waste. Without standard uh, sampling and measurement method, data from different studies are not di directly comparable. It is important that the result of any PM study makes it clear which sampling and the measurement method was used and which species are included. Currently, there are three international standardized methods for sampling and the measuring PM 2.5. They're all listed here. This is one of the three ASO standards. It was published in 2013 and revised September last year. It specifies procedures for the extraction and the measurement of flue gas from stationary sources. It uses basic cyclone samplers for filterable PM2.5 and dilution samplers for filterable and condensed PM2.5. Some countries, such as the USA and Canada, have established their own national standard method. The USA was the first country to standardize the sampling and the measuring method for PM2.5 emissions. Their method 201A and 202 were developed in the early 1990s. Um, and revised in 2010 to include PM2.5. They are the most commonly used methods in the world. Now moving on to the control of PM2.5. As I mentioned earlier, PM2.5 is made up of primary and the secondary particles. Because the formation and the, the behavior of these two fractions are so distinct, their control tends to be dealt with separately. Primary PM2.5, also known as the filterable PM2.5 in the measurement standard, uh, can be controlled as a fine PM. Secondary PM2.5, which is mainly formed from SO2 and NOx, can be controlled as acidic gases. Multi-pollutant control technologies have now become widely available and can efficiently remove two or more pollutants simultaneously in a single system. Not stocks and multi-pollutant controls are covered by our other report. My report concentrated on PM emission control technologies. PM emission control can be classified uh, before, du uh, the before, during, and after coal combustion. Pre-combustion control is to choose the type of coal and the polarized coal to the correct size. In combustion control, it's changing the burning process, for example, by adjusting the combustion temperature, burning time, or boiler load, or injecting high temperature solvents, such as limestone, into the flame zone. The pre- and the in-combustion control can improve the ash characteristics for download downstream control technologies. To reduce PM2.5 emissions, we have to capture it after combustion. Post-combustion control includes the following technologies. First of all, conventional particle emission control devices, PECD. ESPs and the fiber filters are widely used PECD. ESP's PM2.5 removal efficiency is not high enough to meet today's new emission standards. There is a trend globally to replace ESP's with fabric filters, as it is being done in the United States. 
and the India power plants are also looking at converting their existing ESPs into fabric filters. Fabric filters has a high collection efficiency, up to 99.99% over a broad range of particle sizes, and about 99.7% for PM2.5. Some technical modifications to ESP and the fabric filters have been made to improve PM2.5 removal efficiency. Some of these innovative technologies are listed here. One of the innovative PECD is flow gas conditioning. The most common conditioning agents are sulfur trioxide, ammonia, and uh, sodium compound. Sulfur trioxide is by far the most common type of FGC, with over 600 installations worldwide. This installation has a relatively low cost, requires only a short outage period, primarily because the system is not restricted by the space on site. However, some people commented that use of SO3 as a conditioning agent and the slip of uh, SO3 into the treated flue gas will significantly compromise the performance of a downstream amine-based amine carbon capture facility. Some concepts uh, have been developed to improve ESP. Um, of this, wet ESP technology has the most commercial applications. I will discuss this in the next slide. Low, uh, low temperature um, and ultra low temperature ESP have also drawn a lot of uh, attention in China. And there's also an improvement to a fabric filter. White, white ESP operates in the same three steps as a dry ESP, but it washes the collecting electrode with liquid rather than mechanically wrapping the collection plate. White ESPs uh, can be installed in coal-fired power plants after the um, wet FGD system as a final polishing stage to remove very fine particulate and other mists, including um, socks. Uh, you can see the diagram uh, at the right-hand side of the picture. The USA started installing wet ESP in the late 90s. China has become interested in wet ESP in recent years. Their latest achievement is at the Unit 4 of Senhua Guohua Sanhe coal fire power plant. With a combination of ultra-low temperature ESP, wet FGD and wet ESP, the PM emission has been reduced to 0 0.23 milligram per cubic meter. This is not only below China coal-fired power plant's emission standard of 5 milligram per cubic meter, but also below WHO's air quality guidelines of 0 0.5 milligram per cubic meter. Using various chemical and physical techniques, agglomeration combined fine particles into large ones, thus making their collection easier. It sounds like a very simple and a promising method. However, 
there are no commercial applications for these technologies yet at the moment. Indigo technology of Australia's agglomerator was nearly successful. By 2008, there were eight commercial installations across Australia, the USA, and China. Unfortunately, the company went into liquidization in February, uh, February 2011. Uh, it is a shame. Some experts regard this bipolar electrostatic agglomeration with ESP as an alternative to hybrid ESP and the fabric filter technology. The most common hybrid systems are the combination of electrostatic precipitation with a fabric filtration to benefit from the advantages from both technologies. Several hybrid systems are listed here. All these, COPEC, EFIC, and EFF, are commercially available. I will give you some more details uh, later. The other three systems are all stopped at the demonstration stage due to funding. There are also other types of combinations of two or more PCDs, such as electrocyclone and the electro scrubber, but there's no industrial application yet. The compact hybrid particulate con collector, COPAC, was developed and patented by the Electric Power Research Institute in the USA in 1991. COPAC-1 has the fabric filter located in a separate casing downstream of the ESP. Copac 2 replaces one or more fields of the collecting plate with fabric filter modules within the existing ESP's casing. Full-scale demonstrations of Copac technologies were conducted at the EC Garson coal fired power plant and the Big Brown plant. Results from these demonstrations have been positive, achieving 99.9% .9 collection efficiencies. A Hanan Research Control is the licensed supplier of uh, APRIS coal pack technologies. To date, the company has installed over 1,700 megawatts of a COPAC system. Another hybrid system was developed by Zhejiang Feida Environmental Science and Technology Cooperation. The EFF has a split-level filter. This is this special design can even out the gas flow inside an ESP, improve the dust cleaning efficiency of fabric filters, and fundamentally change the conventional flow gas guidance pattern. FIDA's first uh, EFF system was installed uh, at the Tianjin Chentang coal-fired power plant. As you can see, at the top photo. Uh, it achieved a PM emission of 5 mg per cubic meter. The bottom photo is India uh, Ampela coal fire power plant. The electrostatic fabric integrated collector uh, ethic system was developed by China Fujian Longjing. It is similar to COPAC-2. The ESP fields are removed and are replaced with a post-jet fabric filter system. The first ethic was installed in the last three fields of a full-field ESP on a 660 megawatt unit at the Botsan coal fire power plant in 2009. 
the most recent installation is at about San, is at Pingding, sends a 1,000 1, microvolts coal fire unit. It reduced PM emissions to below 4.5 milligram per cubic meter. According to its website, as of uh, December 2015, Fujian Longjing has successfully installed the ethic to 9600 microvolts unit, a 4300 microvolts unit, and the 40 to units below 300 uh, microvolts. To summarize, PM 2.5 emissions for, from coal-fired power plants is regulated by PM, SOX, and NOx emission standards. PM 2.5 emissions is controlled by the PM, SOX, and NOx control technologies. When comparing different countries' PM emissions standards for coal-fired power plants, Attention should be paid to the reference conditions, measurement unit, time averaging period, and the, the definition of new plants. Based on rough comparison, China has the strictest PM emission standard. It is crucial to globally standardize the measuring method so that research results from different countries can be accurately compared. ESPs and the fabric filters are still the commonly used technologies for PM control. A lot of innovative tech moderation and uh, modifications have been made to ESPs and the fabric filters to increase PM e removal efficiency. Of these, FGC, wet ESP, and hybrid systems, uh, COPAC, EFIC, and uh, EFF are commercially successful. These systems can be retrofitted to existing units at a relative low cost and can reduce PM emission below 5 mg per cubic meter. In the 1990s, the USA led the world in PM 2.5 research. As a result, PM 2.5 was first regulated in the USA and the technologies were developed for its measurement and control. In the last decade, in China has renewed the interest in PM 2.5 due to its tight emission standard and the environmental protection policies. Researching for my report, I found that about 90% of the literature on PM 2.5 published since 2010 originated from China. To conclude, there are no miracle technologies for PM 2.5 emission control. Individual coal-fired power plants vary in aspects such as type of coal used, location, water resources, space availability, funding, and the low coal labor costs. Consequently, performance from a certain particulate control technology on one plant may not be achieved on other plants. However, providing correct assessment and the management are undertaken, the emission standard set up by each country and the region shall be achievable with current available pollution control technologies. Thank you for listening. Right. Um, while I'm waiting for the questions uh, to come through, um, I would like to mention the PowerPoint for today's webinar 
will be available to download from the website page of our website later on today. The next webinar from the IEA Clinical Center will be presented by Dr. Leslie Sloth on Wednesday, the 8th of June. Her topic is leveling the intimacy of renewable with coal, cost and uh, risk. Right, um, I have a question here. Is, um, if power plant is only 5% of total PM2.5 and the road transport is only another 13%, why is all the political concern directed towards just these two sources. What is the dominant source of PM2.5 and uh, what is being done about it? Mm. It is a very good question. Um, well, I'm, I'm sure PM 2.5 uh, in air uh, comes from all sources. Um, in my uh, slide, I I've showed you the um, different sources of PM 2.5 uh, in Europe in 2012. Um, however, um, our center is a um, clean coal uh, center. So our interest is on um, clean coal technologies and how to burn the coal cleanly. So um, my report is concentrated on the PM 2.5 uh, control technologies um, for the coal-fired power plant. And another question is, do you have any information regarding continuous measurement of PM 2.5, PM, PM 10 in power plant stack emissions? We have undertaken some crop samples previously in high available results. Um, thank you for your question. Um, I have covered um, quite a lot different measurement and the sampling technologies in my report. But in this um, webinar, I only introduced the uh, ISO method. As in my opinion, we should standardize the measurement um, method. Um, therefore, the different studies uh, can be compared. So if you want to know more uh, information uh, on uh, continuous uh, measurement, um, please check my report. Um, I noticed you are um, from Australia. Uh, Australia is our member country. So if you go to our website, uh, do a one-off registration, you can download my uh, draft report.
Um, there's another question um, regarding um, sampling uh, and the measurement PM 2.5. Um, they, they would like to know what is the best approach. Um, I think this is what we shall focus to study. As PM 2.5 is made up of primary and the secondary um, particles, and the secondary uh, PM 2.5 is formed from SOX, NOx, and the other gaseous uh, pollutants um, when they react chemically uh, in the air. The extra reaction is complicated. Uh, there isn't a method to calculate or model secondary PM 2.5 yet, other than using SOX and the NOx as a surrogate. Um, however, the impact of SOX and the NOx control on PM 2.5 reduction are no uh, are non linear or and are dependent on location. Um, season of the year, temperature, and other factors. And also, um, the majority of um, fine particulate sampling and the measuring method are still concentrated on um, the total mass um, and the particle distribution. So, um, uh, I think uh, further uh, study is needed. Um, there's another question. Can you provide uh, any idea of the relative uh, cost of some of these ES, mm, ESP and uh, FF upgrade options, please? Mm. In my report, I did cover some um, cost uh, of um, these uh, innovative um, technologies. Um, again, uh, please refer to my um, report uh, for more details. Um, but um, I think uh, wet ESPs uh, are relatively uh, cheap and uh, mm, easy to install. And uh, also, there's no space um, restrictions. And so, um, and, and the, um, the end result is, um, is very good. There's another question. I'm wondering to what extent a change in regulation that goes um, 10 to uh, 5 milligram per cubic meter is a same variation in stringency of regulations as changes from uh, 105 to 100. Secondly, to what extent new emission limits can be applied to existing plant and would be the cost? 
Um, I think you are referring the changes of the Chinese uh, emission uh, standard. Um, in China, the air pollution um, is um, has raised uh, concern um, globally uh, as well as uh, China itself. Um, the Chinese government has determined to clean the air. So they have um, strictened the air pollution rules. Um, the, the emission um, limits it does apply to the existing uh, coal-fired power plant. So they request all the existing plants um, to um, install the emission control um, technologies to meet the new emission standard. As I mentioned, um, by 2020, um, every single coal-fired power plant in China has to meet the new emission standard. Another question. In the slide, showing EU emission standards. There's a range of PM2.5 emissions uh, specified, um, for example, 2 to 20. Why is this range and not a single uh, figure as is normal um, for such standards? Um, well, <laughs> it's a good question. Um, I suspect um, the EU emission standards um, is for um, all the member states um, for the um, for the EU and the. Um, and also for all different age of plant. So they would have to give a range uh, for different country and uh, a different power plant to meet this standard. Um, in my report, I actually covered uh, quite uh, a bit of um, EU emission standard as um, uh, United as EU has a quite complicated um, uh, in, in laws and the regulation systems. It has all different directives. Um, so I try to provide as much information as possible to um, mm, demonstrate the uh, EU's emission standard. Mm. Another question, what influence does the coal quality has on PM2.5 emissions? Oh, I'm very sorry, it seems we are running out of time. Um, Thank you for your question. I will please provide an email address so I will uh, give you a written answer. And once again, thank you for listening and goodbye.